Hello everyone. This is the 23rd part of the story Game of Thrones, The Prideful One. Chapter 111 Olena Tyrell Point of View Drugging my son was easy. Now it was time to contact the young bear and avoid House Tyrell downfall. I didn't even like the Lannisters to begin with. I just reluctantly accepted this alliance because Marjorie wanted to be a queen, but no crown is worth it if you can use it for more than a week. Perhaps it was a sign from above that she wasn't destined to be a queen, two kings she had been betrothed, and both had been destined to die. But she could always aim for her kids to rule the kingdoms one day. After all, Ronard had two kids, a boy and a girl, both without betrothal. Father is feeling sick, Marjorie commented. How long will the drug take to knock him out? A day or two, I replied. The drug I had given him was very powerful and would put on a bed for weeks. After that, we will send a raven to the young bear. I see, Marjorie sighed, taking her leave. Remember to tell the foolish of your brother to not mess the plan up, I added. Tyrion Lannister point of view. I had come to a decision, I was not going to let my family destroy this kingdom just because of their pride, because of that idiotic nature of if I don't have it, no one will. It was utterly pathetic and cruel to sentence thousands to death just because they felt they couldn't win. Maybe there was a chance for a family to win, father was a pretty resourceful man, but it was the chance of defeat that frightened me, because my family had decided to destroy everything just so Ronard didn't rule it. I couldn't in good conscience allow this, it was inhuman to stand by and watch innocent people suffer because they couldn't fathom the possibility of defeat. Besides there were only three people I wanted to save, Marcella, Tommen and Jamie, the rest of my family was. Despicable to say the least, and if I helped Ronard, perhaps he would allow them to live. Bron, I have a mission for you, well for both of us, I said, turning my gaze into my cell's word bodyguard. And what is that mission? Bron replied with his trademark wolfish smile. I need you to help me kidnap my youngest nephew and niece, so we can go and talk with Ronard, I answered, making Bron spit out all of his wine, oh yeah, and escaping King's Landing with them, that too. You must want me death. Bron chuckled. I won't do it pal, I like living. Time to use bronze one in true weakness, gold, Ronard is the richest man alive, he owns the Iron Bank, he will pay you handsomely, very handsomely if you do it. Bron stopped for a second, pondering over that, how handsomely are we talking about? Small lord handsomely? Or big lord handsomely? Big lord handsomely, I answered, smirking internally at how easy it was to exploit his greed. Well, I suppose life is too short to not take any risks, Bron smirked, I'll do it, but he better pays me, or I'll kill you little guy. Don't worry, he will, I nodded, hoping that was the case. Then let's get to it already, we have some royal kids to kidnap, and I have a fortune to get, Bron smiled. Ronard Mormont point of view. I was a day ahead of the border of King's Landing, but instead of rushing to attack, I had decided to wait, letting my men rest in the meantime while I waited for my infiltration plans to work. But by what my ravens had informed me, I might not even have to do that, both Tyrion and Olena were betraying Tywin, therefore betraying Joffrey and Cersei. In the end, things were playing out wonderfully for me, and I didn't even have to do anything, but wait for the card castle to fall. The bases are ready, and the men are rested in case you want to start moving your grace, John informed me. Not at the moment, I replied with a smile, I still have to wait for some allies to come. John looked at me with befuddlement, but didn't dare to ask, as you wish your grace. Soon the seven kingdoms would be mine, and I would have all the peace of mind I needed to prepare for the long night. Melisandre point of view. I had finally managed to accomplish what my sweet prince had requested of me, creating steel that would work against the others, it took me some time, that was filled with a lot of try and error, but I finally had it. My result was no Valyrian steel, in fact it was the same as normal steel, but blessed by the god of light to work against the others, meaning my light, my sweet and pure light, my prince had more weapons to fight the others. I had completed his task, just like I had promised, but I couldn't stop here I needed to make sure he was more than happy, I needed to make sure he would think of me an indispensable, and that is why I decided to create more items alongside the blacksmiths, blessed armors, blessed arrows, anything that could help my master win. I will show you master, what a loyal servant is capable of. Cersei Lannister point of view. Victory? Defeat? 
Nothing really mattered anymore. If we didn't win, Ronard would lose. If we won, Ronard would lose. No matter what that bastard would meet his end, one way or another. That much I was sure of, or should I say that much I would make sure of, Westeros was mine to rule, and if I couldn't rule, then it would burn, I would not step down my rightful place without taking everyone with me. I hope you are ready, young bear, I hope you are ready to hear me roar. The males in the pride lead, but the females hunt, and the bear had yet to fight a lioness protecting her territory, and you would see soon enough why lioness are feared. Naltherian Mormont Ravenicus Father was close to get the land piece of land of this side of the sea, and yet he looked like it was only the beginning, the others like he calls them seemed to be the enemy clouding his mind with worry. But I wasn't worried, my father was an unbeaten beast, whose fire burned the brightest in battle, I could feel the fire within him, growing stronger every single day, that fire would burn his enemies, I was sure of it. Father has never disappointed us, he has always come on top, no matter how hard the challenge was, he always proved to be superior, better, stronger, and this time it would not be the exception, and if the rare case of him not being enough came to happen, we as dragon sons would fight by his side to the very end, against all odds the four of us together would be more than enough to destroy anything that gets in our way. I will protect our family father, don't worry, you don't have to carry this weight all alone. Chapter 112 Tyrion Lannister Point of View We had one chance to escape with Tommen and Rosella, out of King's Landing, Cersei was mostly with Joffrey all the time, meaning we have a big window of time to put the kids to sleep and escape the city, but we had to do it fast. If by any chance Cersei suspected of my plan, hell would rain on me, quite literally, so I had to act fast. I had two options, each one was more risky than the other, one escaping during the day, acting completely normal as to not raise suspicions, or during the night. During the night the security was considerably tighter with any movement being reported the very next day or if the situation called for the same day to a superior officer, that would inevitably lead to father knowing. During the day this was way more or less restricted because merchants would come and go, but during the day they would probably see the kid, if they were through enough, or in the worst case scenario Cersei would notice, something that was less likely during the night. I say we do it during the day, Branyan, just act like everything is fine, and nothing will happen. The main problem is my sweet sister, I said, almost choking on the sweet part, if she finds out before we get out of the city we are as good as death. But during the night the guards have direct orders from your daddy to stop anyone getting out, even you little man, Bron stated, with a oddly serious look on his face, our best chance is doing our suicide mission during the day, all we have to do is knock the brats out cold, and if luck is on our side, we will live long enough for me to be rich and for you to do whatever you want to do. I suppose but we would have to time it right, I hummed in agreement, my dear sister, usually goes to court after breaking her fast, so we will have enough time during that window. Then it's settled, now it's a matter of who will knock the brats out, Bron chuckled. No one will knock them out. I will give them something to sleep for a bit, that's it, I sighed, hoping my plan worked, for my own sake, and the few members of my family worth saving. Olena Tyrell point of view. I had written the letter and the raven was ready to contact Ronard. I can only hope the brat doesn't reject my offer. To the most excellent Lord Ronard Mormont, by the grace of the Seven, the rightful King of the Seven Kingdoms, we can only hope to be faithful subjects of your grace, wishing to observe your reign following it with fidelity, wishing you health. We must say we have been misinformed and misdirected by the usurpers on sitting on your throne. We were blind, but now we're not. As it is plain to see that those who are present with you have suggested to your highness many falsehoods respecting us and what do with want, intending all the mischief that they can do, not only to you but also to us, and to your whole kingdom, we wish your excellency to know that we wish to preserve the safety and security of your person and that of your queen, prince and princess with all our might, as the fidelity which we owe to you demands, proposing to overthrow the usurpers, to the utmost of our power, and all those who are not only our enemies but yours too that includes the foes that lie within the whole of your kingdom, and if any other statement saying we are not loyal to you is said, do not believe it, for we shall always be found to be your faithful subjects Olena Tyrell, of House Tyrell, and Marjorie Tyrell of House Tyrell, offer ourselves to serve and obey. All we ask, if your excellency accepts, is to keep guarding High Garden for you, as we have done before. Are you sure this will work? Marjorie inquired nervously. If that doesn't work, nothing will. I sighed as I tied the message to the raven, we are offering ourselves to him as nothing but his loyal servants, 
in exchange of keeping our land for him. Father is finally out, sleeping soundly, the drug worked wonderfully, Marjorie sighed, taking a seat. Good, I don't want him awake for any of this, I nodded as I set the raven into the skies to complete his one and only purpose, delivering my letter. Brinden Rivers, three-eyed raven point of view. From what I could see through the root of the sacred tree, Ronard was winning the war, and soon would face the Night King, but things on this side would not be as easy as they are on the other side. The Night King was planning something, but I just couldn't risk trying to see what, for if he managed to mark me during a vision he would get access to the shelter I had formed destroying all life within. I had to wait, wait for the champion to clash with the Long Night, I had to ensure humanity survived, I was the keeper of history, and history I had to keep. The Night King, he is not the same we, my people created, Leaf stated. You already told me a Budo that Leaf, I nodded. Yes, but I've been going over it, and I think someone, something changed it, made him stronger and smarter, Leaf said it with a grim tone. I also knew that, what is the point? I inquired with curiosity. What if his one weakness, the one thing that can kill him, is not the same? Leaf said with a worried expression. I haven't even considered that. Was the Night King still vulnerable to the same thing he was before? No, he must be. Why would the Light send a champion that can't beat the Long Night? Even if the weakness is not the same, Ronard must be equipped to find his new weakness. Don't worry, Leaf. Ronard changed the song, and while I still don't know whether or not that's good, he has proven over and over that he is capable of impossible things, I calmly stated. I can only hope you are right, Leaf replied. Deep down the guilt of creating the monster that hunted all life was eating her, and there was nothing I could do for her in that. Hope is our only weapon right now, I smiled. Chapter 113 To the most excellent Lord Ronard Mormont, by the grace of the Seven, the rightful King of the Seven Kingdoms, we can only hope to be faithful subjects of your grace, wishing to observe your reign following it with fidelity, wishing you health. We must say we have been misinformed and misdirected by the usurpers on sitting on your throne. We were blind, but now we are not. As it is plain to see that those who are present with you have suggested to your highness many falsehoods respecting us and what do with want, intending all the mischief that they can do, not only to you but also to us, and to your whole kingdom, we wish your excellency to know that we wish to preserve the safety and security of your person and that of your queen, prince and princess with all our might, as the fidelity which we owe to you demands, proposing to overthrow the usurpers, to the utmost of our power, and all those who are not only our enemies but yours too, that includes the foes that lie within the whole of your kingdom, and if any other statement saying we are not loyal to you is said, do not believe it, for we shall always be found to be your faithful subjects Olena Tyrell, of House Tyrell, and Marjorie Tyrell of House Tyrell, offer ourselves to serve and obey. All we ask, if your excellency accepts is to keep guarding High Garden for you, as we have done before. I had received a letter from Olena Tyrell, stating they were nothing but my loyal subjects, meaning I had five out of the seven houses under my control, and while victory was almost certain, I had to play my next move with the utmost respect for my enemy, Tywin Lannister. Power wins wars, only if said power is accompanied by the guidance of intelligence, and while I didn't consider myself to be the brightest mind on the world, I knew what I had was more than enough to win. Father, when do we strike our enemies? Naltharian purred happily beside me, yet another new thing I had learned about dragons, they can purr. Soon, we are waiting for a few guests, I replied, after all, having Tyrion, Marcella and Tommen as hostages would be beneficial. Then again, Cersei's plan was to blow off King's Landing with her kids inside, in the end she really doesn't care about her children that much, that or the crown is more important for her. I want to fight by your side this time. I will fight by your side, Naltharian stated with determination. You mean side by side? I inquired, getting an eager nod from the teenage dragon, very well, I don't see why not. I shall not disappoint you. Naltharian said, breathing fire into the sky out of happiness. Seeing his tore in a fire form, made the words the witch shared with me resonate deep within my soul, each fire it's different, each being channels their inner fire in their own unique way, Naltharian, how do you do that? You know breathing fire. Naltharian looked at me puzzled at my question. I could see in his eyes he was trying to put words to the feeling, words to answer my question, for me is letting go, letting my emotions fly. I picture what I want to do with a burning desire and the fire just comes, it's all about the feelings I guess. Feelings and faith, the fuels I had found to ignite the fire within, 
and knowing myself like I do, faith was not an option for me, besides, I had originally tapped into that power before when I had gotten angry at my situation, I just have to somehow recreate that to the point I don't need anger to do it, I see feelings it is. I can feel the fire within you, it's burning brightly, but you can't control it, Maltharian added, maybe we can practice together. That would be great, father and son time, and besides fire will surely be a game changer when we face the others, I need to control it, I smiled. Ha! I can wait for Regal and Crow to hear how I taught our father how to breathe fire. They will be so jealous, Maltharian chuckled with an evil overtone. Ha! Sibling rivalry. It seems that curse doesn't skip species, I laughed. So what does that letter say anyway? Maltharian asked. The Tyrells pledged themselves to me, and it's time to write them, I smiled as I wrote back to the Tyrells my letter. Lady Elena Tyrell and Lady Marjorie Tyrell, I appreciate you two have reached out to me, and while I cherish the gesture, I consider actions speak louder than words, if your loyalty you wish to prove, you must help me when the time comes, only then I will know for sure you are true to your words, so if you're king I am, I command you to find a way to stop the wildfire the usurpers as you call them have in my city. Looking forward to see how loyal House Tyrell is to my cause, King Ronard Mormont, first of his name, Chainbreaker, Father of Dragons. With the letter done, I sent one of my ravens to deliver this message. Now all I have to do is wait. Tyrion Lannister point of view. It was court time, a time where my sister would leave Tom and Marcella alone. Drugging them was easy enough. All I had to do was offer them a cup of tea, and they were sleeping soundly minutes later. Now the hard part came, getting them out without anyone seeing us. So far it had been easy to get out of the castle, but the real challenge was getting out of the city. We have to move fast but not to fast as to not raise suspicions. We are fine, Bronn said. Not you're not, a very familiar voice made me curse my plan for not being well planned, the hound had discovered us. Well, that was fast, Bronn commented, taking out his blade. Put that toothpick in your ass, the hound growled, I want in. Elaborate? I inquired. The crazy bitch of your sister wants to blow this shitty kingdom on fire if they lose to Ronard who also happens to have a fire-fucking-breathing dragon. I'm out of this fucking war, the hound answered with a stern look, so I want in, and then out, I'll get some gold. I thought you were a knight. Brun smirked, what about your oaths? Or your king? Fuck the queen. Fuck being a knight. Fuck my oaths. Fuck the kingdom, and most of all, fuck the king. The hound growled. That's more than enough for me, I shrugged. We don't have time to chit chat, let's get the hell out here, before we all end burning courtesy of my sister. Agree, Bronn nodded. Hm, the hound nodded. Very well, let's go, it seems more and more people are betraying my family, what an amusing and interesting turn of events. Chapter 114 Next day, surprisingly for me, Tyrion arrived in the morning accompanied by the hound, Bronn, Marcella, and Tommen and if I was being completely honest I didn't expect him to actually succeed escaping King's Landing. Cersei was known for being a bit overprotective of her children, and with knowing that much about her I expected Tyrion to be captured as soon as he tried to escape. But I'm glad he wasn't, he was probably one of the few people in King's Landing I would regret killing by accident or on purpose, so here I was waiting for him to talk about his alliances. Your Grace, Tyrion greeted as he entered my war tent where Ned and Jon were sitting and watching as the little man entered accompanied by his cell's word Bronn, and his recently added companion the Hound, all of them being escorted by Oberyn himself. Tyrion Lannister, I acknowledged, it was a bold move of yours to come to your enemy's camp, with hostages, if you could elaborate why. I. I don't support what my family is doing, it's beyond inhuman planning to burn an entire city just because they refuse to accept the possibility of losing. I just can't accept that. Tyrion said with conviction, I don't want to be a part of that. Hmm, fair enough. I nodded. But what do you pretend by all this? I mean you could have escaped to any other place, and believe me I wouldn't have followed you. After all, I have way more important things to do and take care of, so why me? What do you really want? Tyrion eyed me for a second. I want many things your highness but from one to a half there is a big bridge. That's true, I chuckled. But the most important thing I want right now is your forgiveness, I want if your grace allows it, for your grace to pardon, Tommen Baratheon, Marcella Baratheon and my brother Jamie Lannister, Tyrion said with an almost begging tone. 
I eyed Oberyn who said nothing, nor show any sign of anger, as I proceeded to answer, I don't have any problems with forgiving the kids, because I don't have anything to forgive, but your brother is a different matter. I understand your grace, but... Tyrion tried to say, but I stopped him. Your brother, while not entirely a bad person, loves your sister, and will stop at anything to avenge her. I stated, and even if he didn't want to avenge her future imminent death, he has ignored his oaths as a knight prioritizing Cersei's cunt over anything, hurting innocents just to please the monster you two share for a sister. Well it hasn't been confirmed. Tyrion tried to defend his brother from his incestuous fame. Please, don't, a blind man can see those kids are 100% Lannister, I deadpanned. They do, Ned nodded. Yeah, Oberyn nodded. Besides why would you want to save Jaime, after all he did to Tisha? It was time to break Tyrion's love for his brother. How, how do you know about Tisha? Tyrion asked with hesitation. All I know is that she was an orphan, that you and your brother saved her, and that you married her, I stated. She was a whore. Tyrion lamented. No, I smiled, your father was furious that a common woman dared to marry a Lannister and with the help of your brother they capture her and had her raped by every man in your household. That's. Tyrion tried to articulate some words, but he simply couldn't. Your brother could have let her escape, or let you know, but he decided to obey daddy capturing your wife and torturing her, I stated, he didn't fuck her, but he didn't do anything to stop her suffering. He wouldn't, that has to be a lie. Tyrion said shaking. You can ask him. I offered, and see for yourself how much of a monster he is. I I want to, Tyrion said with resolve. Very well, I nodded as I signaled one of my men to take him to Jamie's. go and see for yourself how much of a monster your lovely brother really is. Tyrion Lannister point of view. Ronard's words echoed in my head. Did Jaime really do that? It made some sense now that I think about it. But he was my brother, the one member of my family that I thought loved me. He wouldn't do that. It couldn't be. He would never do that. Here he is, the soldier that Ronard had ordered to escort me to Jaime said, pointing to a cage on the back. Jaime, I said with a cold tone, colder than I had intended to. Brother, don't tell me we already lost. Jamie inquired with his trademark confident smirk. No, not yet anyways. I answered. Then what are you doing here? Jamie inquired. I have a question, the words, what I wanted to ask was, a lot of weight for me, it was hard to even think about it. A question? Jamie tilted his head in confusion, sure. What Tisha really a whore? I asked with anger in my voice, the more I thought about it, the more it made sense but there was still a chance, a chance Ronard got in my head and played with me, a chance for my brother to be innocent. No dash Jamie answered, and my world shattered, that was the only way to explain it, suddenly all my life made sense. Jamie has always been somewhat good with me. But after Tisha he had been treating me better. I thought at one point he loved me, I was his brother, but all he felt was pity, guilt for what he did, everything made sense now. You are worse than Cersei. I said with a calm tone, at least she has the decency of being cruel up front. Tyrion, I, Jamie started to say, but I cut him off. You are dead to me. I don't have a brother, I don't have a sister, I don't have a father, I practically hissed at him, bye, and enjoy rotting in that cell. Ronard Mormont point of view. I had probably destroyed a sibling relationship with what I had said, but I didn't feel bad at all, what Jamie did had not forgiveness and it was time for him to be judged by his little brother. You think Jamie will admit to his crimes, Oberyn inquired. I do, he is not the type to deny stuff when confronted, I nodded. How cruel can someone be, is terrifying, John added. It is, it is, I sighed. Chapter 115 Tyrion Lannister was devastated, not even in the eyes of the hundreds, no, thousands I had killed, I had witnessed such amount of anger and despair flowing through someone. Maybe Oberyn, but besides those two, no one, Tyrion had finally realized he was truly alone, with none that really loved him, and that the one person that loved him for who he was, was brutally scarred for doing so to a point beyond repair. You were right. Tyrion smiled, anger, sorrow, and a bunch of other emotions shining through his fake smile. So do you still want to save him? I inquired curious as to what he was going to say, I mean I knew he was going to say no, but I wanted to know how. 
No, why would I? Tyrion laughed. All I was for him was a pity case. He never loved me. I never had a brother, just an enemy living with me. I nodded. Well, with that settled, I must give my terms. Tyrion looked at me and sighed. All I want now is to save my niece and nephew. I can grant you that wish, but you must know, your house will be broken. I won't let the Lannisters survive after this, you three may live. But the Lannister name will be erased, I stated, with a tone they left no room for debate. As you wish, Tyrion nodded. Sorry to interrupt, but little X lion here offered me a lot of gold, gold you were supposed to provide, Bronn said, breaking his silence. I want to see this, Sandor Clegane muttered with a low chuckle. Did you? I asked Tyrion. I did, Tyrion nodded. So you see, someone owes me gold, Bronn smiled. I had to admit the crazy bastard had balls. Titanium balls. I will give you 500 gold dragons for your services, I sighed with a bored tone, and that's all you will get. I added glaring at Bronn, leaving an unspoken threat in the air to not do anything rash. Well, not at all what I was expecting. But it will do, Bronn said, hiding his disappointment. What about you Clegane? Did Tyrion also promise you gold? I asked wondering if I should beat the crap out of Tyrion for offering my shit, he should be grateful his suicidal plan actually benefited me. No, but I won't complain if I get some, Sandor Clegane shrugged, all I wanted was to get out of all the fire coming, fuck that. That is probably the most relatable thing I have heard on this mess up world, I chuckled. So if you won't give me gold, I think I'm done here. Sandor Clegane stated. I think I have an employment opportunity just for you. He was a very strong soldier, that would prove to be quite useful on the next war. Hmm. What? The hound inquired. Nothing much, just you doing what you have been doing until now, killing people, I smiled. Not with all this fire. The hound sighed. Not all fights will be fought on fire. I chuckled. Sure, why the fuck not? The hound shrugged. Awesome, I smiled. As I was a now step closer to winning this war, with Marcella and Tommen in my control, I had a few new weapons to manipulate the crazy bitch. Cersei Lannister point of view. Marcella and Tommen were gone, and so was Tyrion. I didn't have to be a genius to know what had happened. Tyrion had betrayed us, I knew it. All along that little piece of shit was playing us, he had taken something too important for me, and I was not going to forgive him, his death was going to be slow and painful, for he would see me roar. I had now to find a way to retrieve my cubs, my babies from Ronard, and one way or another I would, no one had any idea what I was capable of when truly angry. I will have your head Tyrion. Mark my words I will. I growled. Shouting into the air will do nothing, father said as he entered the room, your brother will pay on time for his betrayal, but this little act of defiance of him could actually be beneficial. How dare, my children were away from me and he saw this as an opportunity. How dare you? I tried to slap him but he simply stopped my hand, holding it painfully tight. I will assume that was an ill-advised decision thanks to your anger right now, Tywin Lannister said as he slapped me with such strength that it made me fall onto my knees, learn to control your emotions, and use them for something productive. My children are with the enemy, probably being tortured. Marcella is probably being fucked by Ronard's army. And you are doing nothing. I screamed at him as I stood up from the ground. Truly pathetic, if you actually took the time to study your enemies you would know. Ronard is a northerner like Ned Stark but with brains, he won't kill or have anyone raped, his honor won't allow it. Father sighed, don't let the bear get in your head, we will win, and it would be glorious to do so without hearing you whine, this is nothing but a mere setback, that we can use to our favor. How? I asked in anger. We let him come, we fight with all our might and when he thinks he is about to win, we blow the entire city. Father answered. That was our plan before. I hissed. But now, we have a reason to flank him, he won't take the children into the battlefield, nor he will take Jamie, he will be too busy destroying our armies, to see the bigger picture. Father smiled, he will see us roar, as he and his men burn. Unbeknownst to them, an incredibly sexy and horny raven was watching this exchange, caw. It is I. Zeus. And as my duty commands I shall warn the cornbringer. But first. 
I shall bang that cute duck I saw around the gardens. This is why we don't get any missions, Zeus. Caw. Caw. Shut up, Hades. Bang the duck. I will let the cornbringer know. Crow Mormont Ravenicus' point of view. I missed my father. Why did he take only Neltharion with him? I could fight with him too. I might not be as big as Neltharion, but I was ready to die for dad as well. It's not fair, but. I suppose protecting my little siblings, it's an important mission. Hey, Regal, want a flight? I asked as I entered Regal's lair. It appears, brother, that you have clawed your way into my domain looking for a race. Very well, then. Let me tell you a tale about a fantastic dragon who would always tip the scales in his favor and never lose a race. Regal said with a serious tone, and I wanted to kill him. Once again, he was overusing dragon puns. I will murder you. I growled. As always, your responses are CLA Weesum. Regal chuckled. Say one more pun. I dare you. I growled. All right, all right, sorry, no need to fong me, Regal said, stifling a laugh. Give me five minutes. I growled. For what? Oh, don't tell me, you want to fire your shot at the art of puns? Regal laughed. No, I need those five minutes to figure out how to tell mother I made you the first dragon to go rotisserie. This marks the end of part 23 of the story Game of Thrones, The Prideful One. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.